Welcome to Sterling Administration. Today I'm going to show you our online ERISA app location. Welcome to Sterling Administration. My name is Patty Reimer, Corporate Trainer with Sterling Administration. Today I'm going to walk you through our online employer ERISA application. So from your products page, please click on complete application under your ERISA wrap. This will take you to the ERISA application. Here you'll see that you're going to go through a five-step process of entering your information to capture all of your plan data so we can prepare those documents for you. So here you see at the top is employer information. So here it's going to pre-fill in your company name. You'll also choose the state that your company has organization or incorporation your fiscal year end date. So this is the actual company's fiscal year end date. So make sure this is a future date. The type of entity that your company is. So you have this list to choose from. Do you have affiliate employers? If you do, you may check yes. And if you do, you can enter the information here. If you have more than one affiliated employers, you can click add more. If your company is owned by another company, please check yes, and you may enter the name of that owner company here. If no, you can check that and that box will go away. Down below is where you're gonna choose the type of ERISA document that you'll be establishing with Sterling. So we have our regular ERISA wrap plan that will renew on an annual basis. And we have our evergreen wrap for smaller clients that does renew every five years. The next section of the website is to choose your plan number. So please keep in mind you want to use the next plan number that's available. And this number should be three digits long and start with a five. Your plan name. So we can enter your company's name, health and welfare plan as your ERISA wrap plan name. Or if you prefer a custom plan name, you can click on that button and you can enter in the name that you'd like to name your ERISA wrap plan. Next section is the effective date of this plan. If you already have an ERISA wrap in place, we ask if this is a restatement of a previously adopted plan. So if you did have a plan document already prepared, please let us know the original effective date of that ERISA plan document. If not, you can check no in that box, they'll go away. The next question is, the plan year has a short plan year. So if you are doing a plan year of less than 12 months, you'll want to select yes. You may want to do this if you're coming to Sterling mid-year and you want your plan year to be on a calendar year, for example. You could choose um, this date. Um, so let's say right now I'm in July. I can choose August 1st as my start date. And then I can go ahead and um, it should pre-fill in the end date. There we go. And then over here, I can choose the end date that it ends on. So if I did want a calendar year plan, for example, I can enter the end date as 1231. And this would mean that my plan does renew on 1-1 one, one of the next plan year. If you will be doing a full 12 month plan year from the beginning, you can go ahead and click on no, and then enter the start date of your plan. And you'll see when I do so that um, it should go ahead and pre-fill in the end date of my plan. The next section is welfare benefit plan. Does the plan provide any of the following benefits? So please check off any of the benefits that your company offers. If you're offering something that is subject to ERISA and not on this list, you can always click on other and you can enter in that custom benefit plan there. If you have more than one, of course, you can click on this to add additional plan types. Is the plan maintained pursuant to one or more collective bargaining agreements? Yes or no? If yes, you'll check yes. If no, you'll check no. Next question is, the wrap plan will include. So option one will pre-select all of the options. So this means that all of these benefits are offered by your company and they are all subject to ERISA. If you choose option two, it will unselect hopefully all of them. And then um, once it's unselected here, you can choose only the following health and welfare benefits are subject to ERISA. So you can check off 
the benefits that your company actually offers. If you choose option three, this states that all health and welfare benefits of the plan sponsor, except for the ones that I checked below. So if you do not offer um, maybe just one of these options, that might be the easier way for you to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose option two here, and I'm gonna check off medical, dental, and vision. So going down below here, um, should claims language appear in the summary plan description? We do recommend that you do include claims language in your ERISA plan documents. Any claims language that we provide in these documents will not supersede what your carrier provides to you. Next question is include claims language for the following plans. So I've selected yes here. So you do see that we can include claims language for your health plan if you offer a flexible spending account program, wellness plans, employee assistance plans, or potentially other, in which case you can enter that here or add additional if you have any. If you choose not to include claims language, that question will drop away. The next question is, are any of the health and welfare benefits encompassed in this plan grandfathered? It's not common. Um, so I'm going to choose no here. Are any of the health and welfare benefits encompassed in this plan non-grandfathered and self-administered? Indicate whether the SPD should include an appendix summarizing eligibility and or employer employee contributions for the subsidiary contracts. So if you choose yes, then you will see this chart below. You, if you remember, I chose dental, vision, and medical above, so it's providing me with dental, medical, and vision here. If I do unselect any of these benefits, you'll see that that will drop away. So let's see, for dental, um, the welfare benefit plan name is dental and eligibility and waiting period options. So we have a list of options for the waiting periods when people are have to wait to become eligible for benefits. Um, so I'm going to say first of the month following 60 days of employment for mine, for example. Um, and then we have here employer and employee contribution language. So are the premiums paid by the employer, employee? Is there a shared cost, maybe a dollar amount or a shared cost percentage amount? So if I choose, for example, the percentage amount, I can enter here the percentage of the premium that the employer pays for dental and the percentage that the employee pays. And this will alter itself depending on the answer that I give. And then if I go to medical, it'll allow me um, to do the same here, where I can choose if there's a shared cost or a shared percentage. I can enter that there. So once we have all of that entered, I'm gonna go ahead and save the plan changes. But I do like to point out down here that there are special instructions. So if you do have any special instructions that you'd like to provide to our compliance team, this is a free form and you can type anything you need to in here. Now we come down to ACA eligibility and measurement period information. The first question it asks is, does your plan need a procedure for determining which employees are full-time employees? So are you an applicable large employer or an ALE under the Affordable Care Act? If you're unsure, there is a guide here. You can click on this link and it'll take you to more information. So if you say no, then you're able to skip over the rest of this section and move on to plan sponsor employer contacts. If you select yes, it does drop down another question. Do you have variable hour employees? If you do not, you can click no and proceed on to plan sponsor employer contacts. If the answer is yes, do your medical benefits contracts already contain the required language of the plan's ACA eligibility criteria? If they do and you check yes, you're able to move on. If no, it does have you um, answer several more questions. So based on your responses, we have determined that you will require ACA eligibility information to be included in your ERISA wrap. All fields in this section will be required. So here we come to measurement periods. Um, so this is pertaining to the ACA measurement periods. Um, so for new employees, how many months will the initial measurement period be? When will the initial measurement period start? And when is the initial stability period duration? So you have your options that are ACA compliant to choose from in these uh, fields here. Down below, similar questions for existing employees, monthly measurement period. 
will an employee's full-time equivalent status be determined by counting their hours of service for each calendar month? You can choose yes or no. You have several options there. Uh, will a salaried employee's full-time equivalent status be determined using the monthly measurement period? Will an hourly employee's full-time equivalent status be determined using the uh, monthly measurement period? Um, will other employees' full-time equivalent status be determined using the monthly measurement period? So a bit of ACA questions here. Existing employees and the look-back method. Um, so we have questions regarding that. And down here, there is questions about rehired employees and how you would like to handle those. All right, so moving on to plan sponsor and employer contacts. Here is where you can designate who the plan administrator is. The plan administrator is designated by the terms of the plan document. If an administrator is not designated, the administrator is the plan sponsor. In a single employer plan, the plan administrator is the plan sponsor employer. Other entities like TPAs, service providers such as Sterling Administration or insurance companies that may have administrative responsibilities are not ERISA plan administrators. So typically we see that either plan and sponsor is chosen, committee appointed by the plan sponsor. If we choose, on, uh, choose that option here, you'll see the name of the appointed committee designated as the plan administrator. You can enter that information here. Or if it's someone else, you could also enter that here when you choose other. The plan administrator has the same address and contact information as the plan sponsor or employer. If you choose yes, then um, that's fine. If you choose no, then you will enter the information for the contact. And the agent of legal service for the plan is either the president of the board or someone other than that. If you choose other, then you can type in that information there. Um, the name of agent for the legal service for the plan. So if it is the president of the board, you would put their name here. The agent for legal services contact information is either the same as the plan sponsor employer, the same as the plan administrator, or potentially other, in which case you could enter the other information there. And the last question in this section is, is the plan funded by a trust? If no, you're fine. If yes, it does ask information about who the trustee is. Down to plan notices. Here, we do provide a complimentary copy of the uh, CHIPRA annual notice, the COBRA notice, and the QMCS, uh, CSO procedures. If you would like copies of those, we'll provide them to you at no additional charge. If you do have grandfathered plans, um, then you can choose additional um, notices that may be required of your company, um, and you can check those there, there. Keep in mind there is an additional charge if you select these additional uh, notices. And down below here, you'll enter the total number of employees in your company, the total number of benefit eligible employees in your company. You'll choose um, a frame here, and it will provide you with standardized pricing. If you had 100 or more employees enrolled on the first day of any, plan, uh, any prior benefit policy, a Form 5500 filing would be required. Um, and so we ask if you do have any Form 5500s that need to be filed, Sterling would be happy to help you with those. Do you want Sterling to prepare, prepare this final filing for plan numbers that will no longer be in use? So if you have been filing 5500, we can do a final filing on all the numbers that we are retiring. Um, so please specify here if you do have any plan numbers that need to be retired. Do you want Sterling to prepare and file IRS Form 5500 for the route plan? So if you'd like, um, if you do have over 100 employees, we do include the, uh, the 5500 filing for your ERISA wrap plan year for free. We'll do that for you. So you just indicate here Sterling will file the Form 5500 and we'll reach out to you in advance of that being due. Or if you have another vendor or if you file it in-house, you can choose that as well. I recommend clicking on save and proceed to next step. This will save your application at any point um, you need to step away and come back, or if you just want to save it as you go, um, you can save a copy. If you click continue, it will save your information as you go, but if you were to log out, it may not save your information. So highly recommend clicking on save and proceed to next step. 
All right, so the next step here is to enter contact information. You see that I'm entered here, I entered myself. I can add additional contacts by clicking on this button here. You always wanna make sure to have a primary contact listed. You can also list your broker if you have a, an accounts receivable department who might be paying your invoice or a general agent, you can also list, it, list them here in the contacts as well. Are you working directly with a sales representative? So this may be a regional sales director or one of our account executives. Um, so you'll choose yes if you are working with someone in-house here, and then you'll choose their name from the list. If you're not working with a rep, you can just click on no and that drop down will go away. And would you like us to send a copy of your ERISA wrap invoice to your broker or general agent? If you choose yes, please just make sure to enter their information above so we can make sure to send it to the correct person. Who will be responsible for paying the ERISA wrap account fees for your plan? So if it's you, the employer, you can choose that. If it's your broker or general agent, you also have those options. And this will give you general pricing again. You can choose to either pay via ACH. We will send you an invoice in advance before we ACH a payment from your account so you can verify that it is correct and it is the right amount before we actually do the transaction. Or if you'd like, you can also pay via check. If you choose ACH with the bank account, um, you can enter your bank name, routing number, and account number here. Now you'll be taken through a summary. It's good if you see things in gray here. If you do see that one of these sections is highlighted in red, it does mean that missing information is required. And if you click on edit, it will take you to the section of the missing information and it will highlight it in red. So if everything looks good, you can go ahead and click on continue. And it is telling me that I have missing information. So this is a great example. It's taking me back to the application and letting me know that I have missing information that I need to complete here. So I will just need to go back and complete that information and then I'll be able to continue on and submit my application. All right, so we here, see here there's a message coming up. Fiscal year end date should be greater than or equal to today's date. So if we look at it, this is a past date. And if you remember at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that this needs to be a future date. So let's go ahead and fix that. And now we should be able to continue on and submit our application. So we're just gonna go ahead and fix this fiscal year and date. You see the red highlight around it. So we'll say it is 12-31-2019 is our fiscal year and date coming up. And we'll go ahead and scroll down to the bottom and we'll go ahead and click continue. And now we should be able to submit our application. If anything else is missing, it will tell me. So I'm glad and scroll up and take a peek and see what I might have missed here that's highlighted in red. All right, so now we're on to the last page, step number five. So we just need to check these box stating that we agree to the terms, we understand, and then type your full name here. Here you have a copy of the administrative services agreement that you can download, um, and then just go ahead and click submit form. When you click submit form, it will have an enrollment summary on the page that you can download and review. This will also be emailed to you as well. Thank you so much for being a Sterling client. We look forward to helping you with your COPRA needs.